thank you for joining us for another episode of the Tea and Trails podcast. Thanks to Outdoor Active, Vela Forte, Silver, Active Brute, the Centurion Running Store, Protein Rebel, and Sports Shoes for supporting our community. For the price of a cup of tea, maybe a scone as well, depends where you're shopping, you can grab yourself some great discounts and save yourself a few little pennies, especially now the Easter bunnies around the corner. Save those pennies for a little chocolate egg, maybe. Last but not least, thanks to all our Patreons who dig deep every month and literally keep Gary's lights hot and his mics on. Go over to Patreon and check out all the amazing deals we smashed over 200 patrons. We are absolutely we're winning at life. We are winning at life today, Gary. It was Thank great. You. We had a little. We had a little rush. I put a post about the snoods, free snood. Well, not free snoods. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> I see where you're all heading. Uh, yeah, episode 17. The usual catch up. No brew with the coaches this week. So yeah, if you have any coming, questions, coming, guys. Yeah. It's you, coming, yeah, it's coming, it's coming. You tell, you tell what's happening with brew with the coaches. Yeah, yeah. So we're, a couple of weeks ago we had Rebecca Cam Race Medic GP doctor. Um, she is gonna join our brew with the coaches team. So yeah, if you've got any questions for the coaches or more G P base, you know, if you want that. Let's just can we just put a caveat <laughs> on these questions? Um, let's just say verbs, itching, uh, scratching, moist should not be put into these questions. Yeah, Running, we're not replacing like... your local GP. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Running related, me- perhaps some medical questions. Not, not, not me- medical sounds a bit dodged, doesn't it? Just like maybe if you've ever like feeling nauseous during a race, that sort of thing. We're looking at. Not, I've had this rash since I had a night out in Newcastle, what should I do about it? Anonymous from Wingate. (laughs) Another rash. (laughs) Ah, here we go. (laughs) But yeah, if you've got anything along those lines, email hello at tandreals.com. Right, focus, focus. Yeah, we're super lucky. My goodness me, we've reached Australia again, actually. Um, and we are joined by Akana Mary Bartlett, who ran from Cape York to Melbourne, completing 150 marathons along the way. Our Scarpa shoe competition continues. So, yeah, if you'd like Can't to keep be up in... with it, Gary, it's mainly dog photos. We've gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm not sure if that's what Scarpa were looking for, but you know, there's loads of marketing <laughs> campaigns there. People love running with the dogs. Put some little Scarpa booties on your dogs. On your dog, that'd be great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, stay tuned for all of that. And also, thank you very much for Silver for supporting the podcast during the month of, month of April. Head over to www.silversweden.com. Dot UK and check them out. Loved all the Silver Lakes Traverse and Northern Traverse over the week and weekend. Yeah, well done, everybody. Oh, they've had a busy week. Somebody else who's had a busy week or a whopper of a week <laughs> is Two Cups Sutton. How are you doing, Eddie? Two cups, Sutton. We're on to the third cup for cast recording day. I've gone for a slightly smaller vessel um, than my normal... That one, done that one twice, gone on to the smaller vessel now, so we're in the third cup. Yes, I'm good. The stats lie a little bit on my week last week, Strava stats, because it looks like a kind of average week, but it was it was the intensity, the deep intensity. Oh, I like it, intense. Yeah, it was there. The sessions were there. It wasn't just, there was quite a lot of running around, chattering on the trails as well. But yeah, I had definitely my best week my best week so far and I reckon that's about we were just talking weren't we I reckon that's like maybe five weeks back of like actually thinking about four weeks maybe what I was doing in training ticked off my hills loving my hill sessions feeling stronger and stronger every time I do a hill session I feel like I want to go a bit harder when I'm doing them now but I'm just holding like old easy easy tiger just to keep that heart rate because the minute it goes for me if I go three or four beats higher than a sort of long effort, it all falls apart and I can't breathe in it. <laughs> um, I did my hill I did two long runs. I did a 20-mile road run. Oh, 
God's sake. Oh, my legs, my legs. But I've got to get, at the moment, you know, we've only got so many trails that are clear from snow. So I run on the same trail a lot. Um, and I just want to get moving a little bit faster. I'm aware that Satan's Way is a lot of running. And so I have to run. And it, it's not hard. The road running, like, it, it's very lumpy around here. So I can get 2,000 feet just by running around town, basically. That's what I did. I don't mind it. It's just, I'm just so sore afterwards compared to... It's completely different. A trail run of three hours wouldn't take that much out of me. I wouldn't yeah. really even count that as a long run on trails. I'd be like, that's <laughs> kind of like joy. Three hours on the road. Oh, my goodness. And it was a bit rainy. I'm going to do it again this week because um, I really do feel that they are good for strength and muscular endurance and mental endurance. And then the next day, just the way my week panned out, this wasn't like purposeful, but it actually worked really well. I then did a long run on the trails with mates and uh, we got stuck. As I was driving over to go and meet my mates after dropping um, the kids at school, my friend rang me and there was a massive clap of thunder and lightning as she was ringing. She was like, what do you think? What do you think this is going to end? I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We'll be fine. We'll be fine. We're only climbing up a mountain. It'll be fine. They closed the whole resort. They didn't open it for the whole day because the storm was so bad. Oh, wow. um, so we had a big, we've got a big, well, it's almost a thousand meters up. So it is a big hill. We just think of it as a hill, but it is a mountain, isn't it? So we sort of skirted around the edge of that, listening to the thunder and lightning. And the storm was blowing through so fast that by the time we sort of could go up to the top, we sort of thought it had gone. Anyway, we got to the top. I joke you not... I joke you not, it was so windy at the top that I couldn't breathe because there was no oxygen because the wind was just me. taking away. <laughs> we, I was like... <sighs> Anyway, we, there's a, then the ridge line to run along to get off this mountain. We had to like, I joined, I held on to my friend in front of me and the other two behind. I was like, so you've got, we've got to go. We've got to go. We've got to get off this hill. You could <laughs> see we're like black coming towards us. My friend lost her hat. We were like, literally had to almost go down on, on our hands and knees to get the wind. I've never ever oh, felt it's me like uh, it was, PTSD it, this is it's, yes exactly. <laughs> I, it is, I thought there might be a tornado coming because it felt like it was going like sucking it oh, oh my god we we came anyway we carried on running we got around the corner and my mates were like oh my god oh my god like I was like they were like oh they, I'm so tired my eyes I was like yeah <laughs> what you so yeah try doing that for five days in a row <laughs> <laughs> it's only laughing that was that was hardcore and I suddenly forgot, I'd had the dogs with me and I totally forgot about them and I was like oh my god Lindy oh god <laughs> 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 I got flaws like a big ears anyway that was quite that was quite dramatic but they sort of runs are fun I love that I love that sort of stuff but, yeah when you're down off the mountain see it. yeah when you're down off the mountain and then I, and then there's no signal at the top and I got around the corner and then there were lots of whatsapps from Bryn going uh park up here massive storm where are you yeah <laughs> Tell him, uh, oh, I'm down, just running around town. It makes all fun. <laughs> and I was happy my legs felt fine after that 20 mile road run because that was a bit of a risk, always a bit of a risk. And then a relatively quiet Saturday. And then Sunday, I could have easily not done it, but I knew on the podcast I said, I'm doing 10 by three minutes. It's the last one. And I thought, oh, then go back on and go. I didn't face it. Anyway, cranked up the treadmill and 10 by three minutes at the same pace. Heart rate, joke you not, Gary. Yeah. Eight to ten beats lower for the same pace. No difference. There's nothing I changed. My heart rate was almost ten beats lower per rep. From that when is I brilliant. Really good, isn't it? Okay. So now I, they felt super comfortable, pretty easy. I remember when I started those three minutes and I said to you, like, six felt a lot. And then I did eight and I was like, whoa. I did ten. I was like, I didn't really notice that. I so, like the three minutes. I think that's a good session, I isn't it? I like the three minutes. So I'm going to keep with that. I'm going to go back to six this week, but I'm going to start it. I'm going to do a warm up, And then I find this is good as well. If you're an older athlete, I like doing a post warm up session. So I do like 10 minutes, really easy jogging. And then I do about 10 to 15 minutes of like progressive. I might do like two by five minutes in that at okay. just a little bit slower than the effort I'm going to do, but just to wake the body up. Um, so I'm going to do two by five minutes at probably about this, just slightly slower than I was doing those three minutes up before. And then I'm going to do six by three minutes about, I think I'm going to go about 20 seconds per minute mile quicker, see what the heart rate does, 
catchy, a bit more, a bit more spicy. Uh, but I was super happy to see a bit of progression. I haven't seen yeah. any progression in my fitness because spine fitness, <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? Cause it, cause it's just not, it's not fitness. It's like Rick's being good at hiking in the backpack. So it's nice to see a bit of running fitness, a bit ping and, and coming away from sessions, not feeling destroyed. You will be super fit though, but just not that speed fit. I feel like I've got a massive base. I don't feel like I need to do loads of, like I normally do like biking and skiing. I don't feel the need to do that. I'm kind of re-listening to the body and going, actually, I'm really enjoying doing these tougher sessions. I find if I do the tougher sessions, I almost have to run a little bit less because of the recovery needed from those tougher sessions. Though I love running volume. So I'm just repeating that week again this week because it seemed to work out well. And then I might have a little change up, but anyway. And That's the good. other thing That's I good. loved doing was tracking the Northern and the Lakes Traverse. Two of my dear friends, girls, smashed it out the front. Lizzie Faithful Davis and Katie Carr Saberstein, both of them, both of them ran pretty, I mean, both of them, I think, were in the lead pretty much from a uh, gun to take. I think so, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I love saying that. And James Nobles, friend of the show. Last time we spoke to him, he just had a baby uh, yeah. he was just starting this training block i think he'd done like a week um so i'd love to see a plan come to fruition and then seeing him proper i mean swear, proper tired i love someone who does a race really really hard and then proper finish line photos it's a quite a tough finish to that race because from Nudd's beer it's pretty it's very short but it's a real kind of rapid descent and if your quads are tired or smashed that's tough that is tough I'm going to do a little bit of a deep dive on uh, James Estrava just to see see what he was up to see the volume see the elevation because I get so wrapped up in the numbers and more is better and obviously for James is quite a lot younger than me but he is crushing it you know over a Muddy's day event like Dragon's Back Race to this uh, Silver Northern Traverse he's crushing both types of events so yeah I'm going to do a little bit of Research, I think, is yeah, uh, the best way to say. <laughs> findings. How you how you doing? What's up with you? I am loving the light night since the clocks changed, and um, I've acclimatized. You know, I'm not still mourning about. I've lost an hour's sleep. I really, really enjoy it because you go for a run, and the, the temperature seems like it's a few degrees warmer. So yeah, t-shirt runs too. So that has been nice. Lent is still on. Oh my gosh. Track. Yes, I sort of forgotten about it now. Diet Coke's dead to me, I reckon, Gary. I have forgotten about it. Well, yeah. I think I'm going to go back on the um, the crack. <laughs> the crack. Treat it the weekend. I think I'll probably do that. Um, but I nearly cracked on talk about crack. Yeah, I nearly cracked on Saturday when I was driving back from uh, this filming that I did with uh, Daniel Bai. It wasn't just me. There was a whole bunch of us. Um, no, but, that's just <laughs> but there's a bag of M&Ms that I kind of loosely uh, called sports nutrition, <laughs> but I never ate them during the day. And they were sitting on the car seat as I was driving home and I, I had them in my hand. You know, I, I thought of you there with your diet Coke and I thought, no, no, let's be strong together. Exactly. So I, like the 10 by three minutes, you thought I can't come on. We never lie. We're always yeah. truthful. You yeah. can't come on. You had to fest up to the crew that you were weak. <laughs> I couldn't have lived with myself. Yeah, it's literally was it next this weekend? It's all over. So surely, yeah, she keep keep going with that. I have little tales from the trails myself, actually. On the way back from filming, I was walking back to the car and um we saw these two walkers earlier on the day, but then saw them again on the like ridge of High Cup Nick, and the lady had fallen over and had a suspected broken arm. They weren't sure what it was. But yeah, she was pretty immobile and she had that kind of Capri style tights where you, the bottom of your legs are shown. And she had a, a tin, like one of those tin foil blankets, the really skinny ones. And I said, look, I've got a bivy and I'm not too really, I'm not too sure if she's in a bit of shock or something, but she, she, I don't think she registered what a bivy was. Um, so I got it out and pretty much forced it on her because she was saying, no, I don't, oh, it's fine. I don't need it. But her face was like... Her face was, yeah, I, I need to get to get warm. Uh, but she couldn't really move, unfortunately. So we, anyway, we got the bivy on her up to her bum. Um, so she didn't really have to move. Got her legs warm. Mountain Rescue were on the way too. But I thought <laughs> they were like, oh, do you want, do you want some money for it? Like, oh, it's only a fiver. Eh? So I've had to, but bivvies are the five. I know they're about 20 quid. So I've had to go and buy a new, a new bivy because I'm going away this weekend. Hopefully, I've said I'm going to go to the lakes for about three weeks now. I've not done it. But this weekend, we've got quite a large... Bob Graham round Ricky for a friend. 
So I want a bivy for myself just in case something happens. But yeah, it was amazing just standing around when we were filming, actually. And when we were running, we all got hot really, really quick. Um, but just for a minute, standing around, you got freezing. Yeah. So this poor lady sat on a bum, quite exposed at the top on the ridge. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, hopefully, you know, if, if I don't know how far this if this podcast reaches walkers, but if somebody's oh, chatting I with somebody, the mountain rescue though, someone will know the mountain rescue around that area. Yeah, hopefully she's okay. I'm asking after her. I didn't take a name, uh, and yeah, she can pass that bivy bag forward if she reaches somebody else on the trails who needs a help. But yeah, good, good, good deed. I felt pretty. I felt good that. I was able to help. I think that was uh, yeah. my takeaway. So, and you know, we've talked about it about trail safety with Rebecca just a few weeks ago. So, yeah, to have the bivy on me was very good. And we thought and the- that bivies are so much better or a survival bag than a foil blanket, which is, is about especially when there's a bit of wind. The foil blanket yeah. is like gone. Very good. And the game itself, it was like a. Um, an old-fashioned manhunt game. I don't want to give too much away, but basically we were being chased by one person. Uh, so yeah, he he was chasing us, Daniel. I think it's safe to say that. And then the style of the game is where if he catches somebody, then that person goes on his team. The team that's been chased had to get out of the valley, as many as people out of the valley. So there's some tactics to the game about communicating. And there was a connection to climate anxiety too. And it will be shown. I'm not too sure of the dates, but yeah, when Daniel shares it with us, I'll share it with our Are community. Hope. Well, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll get edited out. I'm not in control of the edit for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, Daniel, but- I went to this filming. I can't see myself in any of these uh, clips. <laughs> I did get a bit tongue-tied. At the end of it, you, Daniel asked us individually some questions, like our thoughts and reflections on the on the deer. And uh, yeah, I did get a bit tongue-tied. So we'll see if the edit is kind to me or not. Oh, podcast, podcast, podcast admin. I've got some going on the snoods have arrived. So that's pretty good. Should we tell the story? Should I tell the story? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. So they're a lovely orange, if you're not watching this on YouTube. Uh, they are a lovely burnt orange, would we say? It's like a high vis orange, I suppose. <laughs> this orange. We wanted something bright. We were initially going to go black, weren't we? But then I said, the, the, uh, I think it's a really good safety thing as well to have a bright colour of something. If you ever were needed to be spotted coming off a mountain, you're running on the roads, whatever, I always like to have. It's quite good to have something bright around your neck. Anyway, on the uh, snood, I really hate that word, Gary. Can't we just call it a buff? Why do can't we... use it. Can't say buff. Oh my goodness me. We'll be closed I'm gonna down. I'm going to say it on the podcast. I'm going to say it. And then buff can come on the podcast. Oh, and. <laughs> <laughs> right, the next warmer thing on the next scarf, we have the Tea and Trails podcast, the logo that Gary designed. And then there are lines all around the uh, logo. And those lines are the contour lines of the place in the spine. You need to go back and listen to my spine podcast if you haven't listened to it already. Where probably I think everybody is safe to say, I had my lowest moment sitting on a bench, eating a three day old cheese roll, having missed the little mini checkpoint, but a little Robin came up and shared my breakfast with me. And I'm a great believer in these little signs. And I just had this strong feeling that it was my grandpa had come and said, you're going to be all right. Go on girl, get on with you. Uh, And since then, I think that's one of the bits of the podcast that the main bit that jumps out of people, people often said, oh, Eddie, you know, or have told me their own story about having yeah. like either a moment with an, often it is birds, an animal, or a moment during something massive where they've just had this feeling that either there's somebody there or they've seen a sign. And so that's why, Gary, it was a lovely idea of you. Was it your idea? Am I giving you credit? It was my idea to use these contours, but it wasn't my idea to use contours. It Jonathan Zink together. reached out said this is a good good idea anyway we love that it has a story now as well and so hopefully it will sort of uh it's not just a neck warmer it's more than that it's a sign of both our community but also perhaps when you put it on you feel like you've got us behind you gary and eddie the best friends you've never met hopefully we'll meet one day so what do you do if you want one of these neck warmers gary well initially yeah we decided that we would basically like a big thank you to our patrons who have been supporting the show so if, if you've been a patreon for six months i think we'd agreed on then um i will send you one out you don't have to have one or you know people are very mindful about 
waste and not needing these products. So if you don't want one, that is totally fine. But if you do, you need to update your address details over on Patreon. I know quite a few people have found that a bit of a chore. I hate yeah. it when admin is a chore. I'm really sorry. Um, I can't believe it's so hard, but uh, apparently it is. But persevere and, a, and your prize will be a neck warmer. Sent from and we ship it overseas trip. too, you know. So yeah, I'm super excited. Hopefully, uh, it'd be great to see when we do start you look shipping. Very the nice in it. Not only a movie star, but a model as well. Thank you very much. And these might, you know, I might evolve the design. So these little neck s- scarves, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, might become very, very, very rare. What else has been happening with me? I've been trying out uh, the guys from Active Root. Actually, they sent me some of their Active Root fiery ginger and lemon chews now they are nice and they go down well so i'm being quite pleased to try them but the name gives it away a fiery ginger but yeah really yummy but they are fiery but I, yeah luckily i quite like them running wise 85 miles running and walking bit of a dip because uh saturday my goodness me i think i probably did about eight miles so doing the filming was awesome but then i lost my long run <laughs> but i still managed to do like 22 hours of movement what are you so doing? what are you doing in those 22 hours long slow walks with the dog <laughs> i think that's what it is and about fourteen thousand feet of elevation so pretty good the quality sessions i know people like it when i say quality sessions i did a 30 minute threshold run on the trails so heart rate probably did go a bit low in places but like we've mentioned before when i was asking about why am i so shit at running up hills this is a good simulation for cross country this um threshold run route and i may be a bit disappointed with the distance i covered on saturday but because we we had to do this manhunt race twice they were two basically minutes uh about 20 minutes in total with an enormous rest in the middle but there were two 20 minute hard efforts um on that day too so kind of two sessions uh not a massive run as far as distance is concerned on sunday so just over three hours um i think it was like 15 16 miles so three hours on the local trails and i did i think i set myself a little mini goal to lift heavy twice that week and i did i did two gym sessions that was nice to hit that but then it was like because i went to the gym twice i didn't do my mobility and core work at home so something give i'm really struggling just to do that three times a week time is precious you know this and all our listeners will know this if you don't do it when you're supposed to do it quite often doesn't get done but yeah can't complain with that the strava lines were going in the right direction but yeah strava. <laughs> <laughs> a little dip this week, but I'll take that. It's fine. Athana Murray Bartlett ran 150 marathons from the tip to toe of Australia to not only attempt to break the Guinness World Record of number of consecutive marathons, but also to raise awareness for animals and plants in danger of extinction. Yeah, I really enjoyed our conversation today. Uh, I hope you all do too. Thanks for coming on the Tea and Trails podcast, Akana. You've run 150 consecutive marathons, not only a new Guinness World Record, but you smashed the old world record too, while raising awareness and an amazing amount of money for Australian Wilderness Society. Thanks for coming on the Tea and Trails podcast. We ask all our guests this, where are you? What's the view from your window and have you been for a run today? Oh, really great questions because they're all super relevant. <laughs> I'm currently in Changu in Bali in Indonesia. Yes, I'm sweaty and my hair's in a top bun because I just was really restless all day waiting for it to cool down enough to go for a run. But I just went along the beach for about eight kilometers. And it's the first time I've run barefoot in yeah a very long time so yeah of 8k beach run outside my window is currently a very small indonesian backyard i was sitting out there for a bit of a better audio until i got destroyed by mosquitoes so now i'm back yeah. inside staring at a white wall <laughs> you're really sympathetic <laughs> about the mosquito bites don't worry everybody i just told her to get over it because i feel that sorry as we're trapped in british and france end of the winter she's like oh my god i gotta get a top on from my bikini <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm waiting till it gets cold enough to run. <laughs> yes, I had to wait. And then the beach run, it was really tiring. When I got that coconut to drink, I felt tired drinking it. But... <laughs> <laughs> and is the most envious. We're only envious. It's only jealousy. It's a nasty trait of mine. It's nasty. Uh, I'm actually <laughs> craving a bit of cold weather. I actually have been only in the heat since, yeah, August of, of last year because I ran through summer um, north and then finished into, into summer and now I'm in Indonesia. So I haven't had a cold day. I think I've acclimatized oh it, you know. Chasing <laughs> so I'm not the sure sun, what wow. where winter rolls around. It's quite a big difference, isn't it, from the north to the south. I think Melbourne, I wouldn't say it's the same as England's climate, but it can be quite changeable. Oh, Melbourne's freezing. Like and and it's <laughs> got that London miserable mood about it sometimes. Not to say London's miserable, but I've definitely lived in London and it has miserable <laughs> vibes every now and then. Yeah, when it's cold when London's <laughs> cold and grey, there's not joy. There's no joy in that in the long. <laughs> pavements no i can't imagine that in melbourne i thought melbourne would always be like sunny all i hear is like 5 a.m runs and then coffee stops and the beach and lots of coffee no no melbourne's cold for four months five months of the year but that's actually why it's got it's probably one of the biggest and i only say this because i am a melbournian but it's got one of the biggest running cultures in australia yeah. um because it's got the climate for running. So, yeah, I mean, up in Queensland, it's generally too hot. And I can say that because I live here now. And I, if you don't get out of the house by 4.35, which is not oh. my running hour, you miss your opportunity. So, Which I, just before we start recording, and I spent some time in Brisbane. And classic Brit running about two in the afternoon in Brisbane, I used to get fried. It was pretty it was dreadful. <laughs> you learn after out. day one never to do that again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Could you share a bit with our listeners about you? Football, I'll call it football, not soccer. Um, competitive runner, nutritionist. There's loads to dive into there. Yeah, yeah. So I was a football player for most of my life. I actually, yeah, went to US and, and, and the UK to Reading to play uh, football for years and years and years. So I didn't get into running until later in life in my twenties. Um, and I just ran to keep fit really for my other sports and what I love to do. So when I moved home from my big overseas stint, uh, I wanted to meet new people and move into Melbourne and do the whole kind of, yeah, I'm an adult now let's have an apartment and live in a city. And across the road from me, there was an ass club. Um, and I thought, Oh, it's a good way to meet, meet people. I, I like running. I wouldn't say I I love running. I didn't really even understand running as a competitive sport, but yeah, I went across the road and completely fell in love with it. And that was back in 2000 and going to get this wrong, 13, 10 years ago. Um, yep. And yeah, yeah. Just sort of loved the the shorter distances because I didn't hurt as much, but it was never very fast. And my coach took years and years to convince me that you're actually in a marathoner, that you're a marathoner, but it just looks so <laughs> grim. The marathon, it just looked hard. And you know, everyone's just, no one looks pretty when they cross the finish line of a marathon. No, one. <laughs> Lots Gary, of ugly tears. You always look pretty, Gary, but no. Oh, except Thank for you. Gary. Again. It's very kind of you. <laughs> and so, yeah, and so I sort of just fell into it that way naturally. And yeah, I think over time, the more longer distance runs I did, I, I, I did, I was better at them. You know, I'd be finishing higher up on the start list when I would do a longer event until I finally attempted the marathon, maybe not even that long ago. It would have been 2018. Um, and yeah, I hated it. DNF'd my, my first marathon. I only got to 30 Ks and oh. yeah, went out, went out way too fast went out like a 5k as we all do in the first <laughs> i love it it's exactly what we all do <laughs> and everyone always says do your first one counts even if it's a dnf so i don't like sugarcoat it i did I, I did not finish it 30ks i got to but it was the fastest 30ks i'd ever ran so that was that was cool. something um <laughs> Did you go through halfway um, thinking this is easy and then all of a sudden the wheels fell off? Yeah, no, I probably got to 10K thinking it was easy. By <laughs> by 15, I was hurting. By 21, I was a mess. <laughs> and by 28, I was practically walking. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> So I've come a long way. I've learned, I've learned a few lessons on the marathon front. Um, but yeah, went out on the next one a bit more conservatively, uh, 
paced myself better. Yeah. Treated it as a, with the respect that a marathon deserves and yeah, fell in love with it after that. So I really only had two years of competitive marathon racing under my belt before COVID hit. And yeah, we were plunged into what ended up being, you know, the (laughs) isolation indoors, no racing. We we in Melbourne. The Australian one was the Australian COVID restrictions were as bad as the French ones, weren't they? We were proper. None of this UK, like you can still go. We were lucky. We were so lucky when I hear about tales from all over the world. We weren't allowed to leave a 5k radius from our house. And it was so funny when people lived on the water because because their radius was then two Ks, like two and a half, like they'd lose half oh, their no. radius. <laughs> so rough. yeah, we were only allowed, we were allowed five Ks from our house and we were only allowed, allowed outside 60 minutes a day. So that was it. So if you wanted to do shopping, that's, that choose into your exercise time. So yeah, I would only run, like leave the house, turn my garment on, go as fast as I could for 60 minutes and come home. Um, and it was a really strange time because everybody was watching everybody. So you couldn't really, yeah, not that were. I would have broken. Like, this is what it's like in wartime, isn't it? Because yeah. people were mean. People were yeah. judgy, 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 judgy. I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure loads of people turned yeah. their driver off because you weren't supposed to be, like in the UK at least, it was pretty frowned upon. So if you went to the Lake District, uh, and you'd say someone for me, that would be an hour, two hour drive. But I think people just turned off all their running social media just to pretend <laughs> they were just running around their local streets. Yeah, I uh, I turned mine off too because I was scared that if I went to 61 minutes, that would actually call the, call the cops. So I heard, yeah. so, I mean, we weren't told, yeah, you know, like I get it. I totally get it. And yeah, so it was actually a really hard time for me because I, you know, I I get a bit antsy even on long car drives. Like I always have to be moving. It's something, you know, my my partner just calls me a puppy as long as I I get walks like every 20 minutes and I need like, you know, lots of food and lots of naps. Walks and treats. Um, Yeah, (laughs) walks and treats. Yeah, I'm happy. So, yeah, I was really struggling mentally. So I, I, I decided to move up north to Queensland, which had much more relaxed um, rules. And I was allowed to legally. I, I just had to do a two-hour, sorry, a two-week hotel quarantine. So I was locked in this tiny room for two weeks um, with the government, all, all by the books, and had to, um, yeah, pretty much had this two-week window where I had a lot of thinking time, a lot, to reflect on what made me really happy and by that point it was pretty clear because I'd use that kind of rationale to move and that was you know the wilderness and running and I had this childhood dream to run the length of the country that I sort of had thought about a lot as a child when I grew up in the bush and you know connected to to nature but lost as you know life takes its toll and you know I was fulfilling other fulfilling the running kind of dream through other avenues, which was road racing and marathon racing. But when that was taken away from me, I thought back to this childhood dream. Um, and I partnered it with a cause that's really close to my heart, which is, you know, climate action and the environment and Australian wildlife, which are currently going through, well, not currently, they've always been going through a huge extinction threat. And I thought, all right, well, now or never, I'm going to get out of quarantine and I'm going to run the entire length of the country. And I guess fatefully or coincidentally, when I got out of that lockdown, I was walking randomly through a town that I lived in and ran into a strapping young man who said, Hey, I'm a filmmaker. I just don't have my story. And I'm like, Oh, well, I'm a runner. I just don't have my filmmaker. So collectively, (laughs) collectively it was a business deal turn turn relationship and yeah he oh, was my I number see. one support <laughs> romance we've been looking for i don't it's think no, i don't think in hindsight he knew what he was in for because he'd never supported a runner before and then you know how hard it is to to, to support or crew an ultra imagine doing it yeah. for 150 days in a row <laughs> he's done that he must have seen some sights and heard some things. Yeah, well, we're still together, so that's hey. good. <laughs> I love that. We met on the street. He said, I need my story. I'm a filmmaker. <laughs> I need my story. <laughs> you were like, I'm your story. Oh, my God. I'm your story. <laughs> I'm a really good one. It is important. You know, you've raised a lot of awareness and uh, funds, but, yeah, talk about the story. I think that is is vital to engage with people, especially on social media. 
Oh, absolutely. And and the success of this campaign, as much as the running was, you know, the story, it's highly attributed to to the way he communicated it because all the content was was created through him because he had the time, to- not the time, he was ru- running off his feet, but he prioritised sharing the story in a positive, creative way, which I think definitely helps. And I have a lot of people that reach out to me now since I finished and even while I was on it saying, hey, I'm doing this incredible fundraiser but I just don't know how to reach, make the reach you, you got to. And I'm like, to be honest with you, you need to, if you don't have, you know, I was lucky to have a partner, but you need to outsource that social media because I know firsthand, you're not going to have the energy to do it. It might not be in your skill set, but yeah, if that's what your objective is, and mine was to raise that awareness and raise funds, you do need to outsource that kind of marketing help a little bit. I think. It does need to be the right person too. I think, you know, all of us got smartphones and we can use Instagram, but if you can't tell a story, <laughs> you can have all the kit, all the gear, all the microphones, and yeah, but you can't get the story yeah, but across. Also, I imagine the energy, like you don't have the, you, all your energy has to go into you mm-hmm. and moving forward every day and then recovery and phones and social media is za- energy zapping. There's no like giving back, is there, of putting something on Instagram. There's no like, oh, I feel so much better. It's like creating <laughs> posts and videos and all that sort of stuff. But also what and that, that must have fed your energy as well, realizing that as you went along, so like Australia realized what you were doing and then slowly like your story spread. Because I don't think I joined in till about, maybe I heard on when you were about like day 25 or 20, Six suddenly it obviously started growing traction were you kind mm-hmm. of aware of that yes I was aware of that for two reasons one the, the the social media following but one of the things I was doing was putting my start point and time on Instagram and Facebook and that was because I wanted to make it as much of a community run as possible and I noticed and this could have also been geographical location because I did start very remote but the further south I got the more people would join me every day um there was about 2000 solo case but that's okay (laughs) um and then after that every day yeah more and more people would join me to the point that the last run I wouldn't even be able to count it was so it was, it was incredible. That last run was around the Botanical Gardens, um, which is a 3.8K loop in Melbourne. It's like very iconic. And I did, I ran around the city and then four laps of this specific track and every lap would get a bigger kind of crew of people. And I, I would say it would have been in the hundreds of people just running. Oh my there's goodness. This mass, there's this, yeah, it's this film of all this dust coming up like a stampede. It's just hard to even describe how good it was, but that's how I knew it was gaining traction, but also through the fundraising as well, I guess it would, you know, started slow and then managed to gain a lot of traction towards the end as well. You, you could, you don't have to be truthful for this, but did you find some mornings though, when people joined you, you were quite, how did you stay upbeat? Because I often find when I start, I'm a bit miserable. Oh, so she's so grumpy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Were you ever like shy? I just need a couple of Ks to ease the body in, and then we start talking. Or we just super. You're gonna say I'm really? a much nicer person than you, Eddie. <laughs> uh, yeah, really interesting question because it did give me a lot of anxiety, anxiety. but not, yeah, the, that's not what... the morning. Yeah. That's not the morning good. stuff because I'm fine early in the morning. That's when I'm. That's when I'm my my upbeat. But you know, like you've got this time ahead of you, four, five hours to run yeah. with someone who you've never met before. And I used to get anxiety when people would tell me that they were there for the full 42, which, you know, on flip side, I should have been super grateful for. But I remember thinking, oh, what if we don't have anything in common? And now it's yeah. going to be five hours of just me trying to entertain and make it not <laughs> awkward. And like, I did feel a lot of that social anxiety. And sometimes it would get too much to the point that I would give myself a solo run and just not, and just kind yes. of luck yeah. out for a day. Yeah. 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 And then, and then that would be, but I actually had some friends come and join me too for like consecutive days running. And they also also worked as a bit of that social, uh, like help by asking. Yeah, like you, just, being, can you just talk to these people, get their backstory, see if we've got anything yeah. in common and then bring them towards me if they're interested. <laughs> well, no, I like the idea that you give yourself like a, a day to reset before you could uh, kind of be on, on, on form again. Yeah, it's a good idea. I had to because I, I found it would be about three or four social runs and then I would need a, a reset. That's sort of how it would work. And I was okay if people would, because most of the time people would only join me for half. 
um, yeah, it's when I would have company for the full 42. And then I was also visiting schools in the afternoons and community groups. So my days were actually like really social. Um, so I would often go to finish a run, I'd eat, a, eat some food, find some water to, to, to clean myself in and then jump straight into a school for a presentation on the whole cause I was running for and goal setting. Um, and depending on the age group, I mean, the, the real young kids were beautiful, but if you do, if you do a presentation for a group of like 15, 16 year old year nines, that's yeah. challenging. Like they can give you got to get crowd. Uh, come on, come on. <laughs> crowd. It's cool to be on. It's cool to be disinterested at that age. And you're like, give me something. I'm sweating bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them wouldn't even care about running either. <laughs> Not yeah, especially like, in the marathons. This, they'd be going home going, Mum, this lady came in, she was doing some sort of run, she was a bit stinky. If it's anything like my older kids, they'd be like, Oh mum, we had someone like you at school. She came in, she was going on about running and running. You'd have really liked her. <laughs> I'm only doing the young kids from now on. Yeah. It's all I can handle. I mean, love all the animals and you're saving the animals and you're amazing. Yeah, I get that. And how are you feeling now? I, I'm getting the impression you're feeling a bit back to, back to normal. But yeah, is it, I'm right in thinking it's about two months out since you uh, broke the record. Energy level, sleep patterns, appetite. Yeah, are they all back on track? Yeah, now, I'd say no, only just in the last two weeks. Um, oh, wow. I was a mess for the first month. And it was interesting because there was so much going on off the back of it. And I, I had all of these ideas that I wanted to do with the momentum of it as well, because it's kind of this weird catch 22 where you have four hours or five hours to think every day, but then no action, energy to action what you've thought of. So I had, I built up literally 150 days of ideas, but then would wake up in the morning and I'd be foggy. Um, this is after I finished. And then I'd go back to bed at 10, sleep till noon, have maybe an hour of energy. And so I was frustrated, mostly tired and frustrated. And I was trying to be kind to myself, but I was also trying to leverage the momentum and that faded. And, and, I'm, and now I'm, I've got clear thoughts again, but I just yeah. find I'm needing to nap a lot more than usual. And my running is, isn't quite back where, where it was. Um, but I am moving again and I'm starting to feel better when I'm moving. So that's a really big win. I feel so much better these last couple of days than I have since I finished. So that's good. I did a massive race at the same time as when you, um, at the same time as when you started all in a one of though, um, over in England. And I was amazed at how, when I thought like the recovery would take like a week or two weeks and it has taken me about the same time as you, like it's literally like the last couple of weeks I've suddenly thought, Oh my God, I've had brain fog because I feel lighter and energy and I don't, and I can get through a day without a nap. I'd like a nap, but if I don't have a nap, I can get through the day. <laughs> but there's not a lot written and certainly not for what you did on recovery and especially women's recovery. Um, there's nothing out there to go like, this is my journey. This is what happened to me. So <clears throat> that might be something that's quite interesting for other people and especially other women that have done massive things. And I had quite a lot of women reach out and go, I think our hormones maybe take a real hit as well. And, um, and giving yourself, yeah, being prepared that two to three months is going to take to recover when you've pushed your body uh, to the absolute limits. Did either of you? I've never asked you in the city, but did either of you have any, like, say, blood tests afterwards to see, afterwards to see if you needed, if you were lacking any, anything after the after the challenges? I did because I'm a nutritionist, so I was super interested about my blood work pre and post. So I, for, for a bit of context, I put on five kilos to do this run, knowing that I would probably need a buffer because I was running like high level marathon, not high level, but like I was running fast marathon. So I was constantly maintaining a race weight. That's probably lower than what a, my healthy weight would be. It was still healthy, but just a little bit yeah. lower. So I was always running on that balance between, you know, running fast and injury, you know, that threshold, that's a fine line. So I, to make myself super healthy, put on five kilos, stopped running in the lead up, worked more on balance and injury prevention and strength. And my bloods were fine. I lost five kilos. I lost all of it, um, but went back to what was my kind of normal weight pre um, when I finished, got my bloods done and was fine for everything, except I was low in protein, um, which I kind of expected because my partner's plant-based. So he was cooking a lot of plant-based foods, which 
I mean, as a nutritionist, I would know how to, to add in protein, but I think my protein levels were just higher than I even I anticipated yeah. them to be. Yeah. That's a lot of pulses, isn't it? If you need to get protein from a plant-based diet, wow, that's a, just a, the volume of that amount of food. You're running like four to five hours a day. <laughs> you don't have time for all those lentils. It's a lot of chickpeas, man. Oh. A lot of chickpeas. <laughs> During the school talks, you're like, guys, keep talking. I'm just going to get this tin of chickpeas down. <laughs> <laughs> so, but other than that, my hormones were fine. Um, I did That's notice nice. when I started running again, my joints were probably the sorest. My lungs are fine. My yeah. VO2 max dropped a lot. It dropped from like high 60s to 56, which makes sense. My, my, my ability to run slow had it dramatically improved pretty much indefinitely but yeah yeah my VO, my vo2 max was like plateau like went right down oh. so that was that was interesting because i wondered what it would do to my fitness because a lot of people had said hey you must be the fittest person but it just depends on what you're it's all specificity right it's all just yeah. what you're doing yeah for sure That's have really you tried any collagen in your recovery process I have, yeah, I have, yeah. I just kind of make shakes and and do what I can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying it. I must be six or seven weeks into it, and maybe for the first four weeks, I was thinking, oh, is this really doing anything? And then all of a sudden, I kind of went past a, a point, and I've got a, a long term achy left knee, and it's not aching anymore. Which hope, you know, may, maybe it's that, maybe it's not, but it's the only thing that's significantly changed apart from loads of vitamin D and B. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I'm a big, big fan of collagen. Curious, has the rec- has the world record been verified yet? I know it takes quite a long time from when you finish to processing it. No, I'm I literally am refreshing my my, oh my goodness. browser because it must <laughs> it must be any day now. But I guess the the reason it's even more delayed than what it appears is because it took literally two weeks to upload every GPS map, every, so there's so much you need, you need oh. photo evidence, you need witness statements, you need every, you need a logbook, you need the, the actual like dot KML file. Long story short, I didn't do it as I went. Um, I just did it all at the end and it took no, okay. so long to go through <laughs> the files and find all the photos and film. So yeah, it's been probably only really, five or six weeks and they say it can take three months oh wow it could get broken but before i even get it because no, no. <laughs> no i'm following candace burt um and she's mm-hmm. just gone through hasn't she 150 she's running ultra marathons isn't she so they don't verify they say you have to either run marathons don't they oh, or, that's interesting or, yeah i saw her this morning i just wondered yeah and i'm watching every day and i think i saw her post like she said she's finding it really tough now suddenly she looks looks really tired and um yeah gosh that is and I think she's doing a lot of that all by herself as well so that's mega. yeah I've been chatting to her heaps because I didn't know of her existence until I read an outside magazine article where she said she was going to go for 150 she was going to try and get my number and this was before I'd even finished because I because I put it to the world that I was doing 150 that was my I was always doing 150, uh, where she doesn't have an end goal. But I'm curious now because she, her mental goal was 150 to yeah. catch my number. I wonder what what it would feel like now because I personally know when I got to 107 and broke the record, the last 43 were excruciatingly harder. So I'm interested to see how she goes now. But I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely rooting for her. Like I wanted to get as high as she can get. And it's super interesting because like I said, I set 150, but I wonder had I not set a goal would I like how far could I have gone T- yeah. secretly? I'm glad I set it as a goal. Cause I'm yeah. glad I'm not still running. <laughs> I think not having the end goal or that's mentally. That's hard. That's, isn't it? that's hard. That's super I think tough. she's mentioned a few times now she's going to go for 200. Yeah. Uh, but that's a still a long way to go. And, and it, and it take I just, every day I like when I'm whining about doing a 90 minute run and then I see she's already back <laughs> and she's done another and uh, I was like, come on, man up, Eddie. I love that. It was like when we spoke to Dean Carnassus, wasn't it? He said he did a marathon or something before breakfast. <laughs> we were like, oh, we felt so lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and has anybody reached out? I know you mentioned about uh, somebody 
going for the record before yours has been ver- verified. Is anybody sniffing around or? I've had a lot of messages of people asking for advice on how to do it. Um, yeah. I do struggle to give specific advice because everything's different. If I, my biggest tip is if you're going to do it, um, if you, yeah, you have people around you, you like your support is just as important as anything else. And I mean, I like the people that had the record before me, the two women and Candace, they're doing it from their home. I think that's a lot easier than taking an off-road tent and going to the most remote part of Australia and then just yeah. running 42 k's <laughs> down corrugated roads through the wind and the dust, finding a river, washing, and then starting again. Like what I did was, was half record attempt, half adventure. Um, so there are easier ways to break the record than what I did. Um, but it was a wild ride, so I don't regret a second of it. (laughs) And you've got such a story. Can you just tell us a little bit about that route, your route choice and a little bit about the route being Brits? I can't imagine really, apart from having seen it on, um, or uh, on the little clips what 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 was the route like so essentially we followed the the east coast of australia now the bruce highway is the main thoroughfare it's a big road that goes from pretty much top to bottom uh and it's very busy so i didn't go down that i added 2000 k's to my journey by essentially hitting all of the national parks and coastlines because my objective was to hit as many, yeah, beautiful wild places as possible because I was advocating for the protection of them. So running down the road didn't make a lot of sense for my, yeah. for my, for my cause. Um, but to paint a picture, the first kind of 1400, 1500 kilometers is one dirt corrugated road that can only be accessed by off-road vehicles. Um, and it's, so dusty. Um, so when I was running south, so every time a truck went past me, it would just shoot up this big, oh, big kind of cloud of dust. Did you see it coming and be like, yeah. oh my God, no, no, no. Yeah. So I would just be protecting my eyes as much as my legs. Um, I got myself a calf injury because I tripped on a corrugation and strained my calf because I couldn't see the road. Um, and that was annoying because I was 680 Ks from the closest physio, but 680 very slow off-road Ks. Um, but so to paint a picture, there's no shops up there. There's no phone reception for weeks. So we had to have all our supplies with us. Um, and thankfully my mum and dad took their long service leave and just did that corrugated 1500 Ks with me for two reasons. So mum, Mum would ride alongside me. She got this off-road e-bike and she'd carry four, five, (laughs) even six litres of water with her and, you know, sunscreen and cliff bars. So she, she rode that entire way with me. And that was, you know, so, so special. And then dad would act as the stand in bush mechanic for anything that went wrong while we were out there because the the road shakes vehicles apart, essentially. It's so rickety that it shakes all the screws and nuts and bolts. So as I would run down this road i would just every the road was littered with things that had fallen off cars oh like oh, wow. <laughs> so his job was to keep our car and their car running so we could keep going and then once we hit the bitumen they they went home and yeah my partner and i carried on it's pretty wild like you say that top that top of australia i think oh, it's quite a long time ago since i've been there but after port douglas it does seem to get pretty remote and it's it's really like um forbidden fruit you see all the landscape and you see the sea and you think my that'd be so lovely just to go for a swim but from what i remember you don't go in the sea do you up there no. And I'm from Victoria, which is the far opposite. And we don't have anything like that down there. So you can't t- go more than one to two meters from the water's edge. And this is rivers and the beach because of crocs. You can't swim in the water because of marine stingers or jellyfish and they'll get you. Oh, you Australia. can't. Like, it, doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't call out to me, Australia. It's deadly. I'm sure the crocodiles go in the sea, if I remember, right? They do, yeah. And they're now saying that they're finding crocs that have coral um, growth. So they're actually living out there, which is not something we always just like the current science was just that they travel to estuaries through the sea. But now they're yeah. showing evidence that they're they're living out there, which, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's awesome if they are, but yeah, it just shows you've just got to be careful. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like there's the snakes up there at the Taipans, there's death adders. Yeah. And these big spiders because no one else runs. I was the only person in the entire Cape running. I get all the spiders because you're just like running through these. You're like, oh. <sighs> 
<laughs> you were like, Mum, Mum, you got you bite through, Mum. You take the hit. <laughs> we got chased by a wild Brahma bull up there, and and she, as soon as it started chase, like it started to build momentum up to charge at us, she was off. She put her e bike on turbo and and legged it and left me. The only reason I'm still alive is because this car came the other way and sort of like. D- and because it was on the other side of the road, it deterred its movement and like scared it off. I don't know. She was like, well, I have three other sisters, like daughters, you know, like I can lose one. Yeah, and I like fun. that. She was like, I love you, but you know, I got to say, isn't it? Save yourself. Save yourself. I'm there. Yeah. I'm with- <laughs> so when you started this bit, this sounds super tough, this first bit of your journey, how was that like mentally taking those first steps? Was it, were you like, whoa, I've bitten off more than I can chew here. Because when you've got a massive thing ahead of you, sometimes it's like, can I do this? Can I do that? Or were you like, dead set, I got this? I was excited to start because, to be honest, the start line was harder than, like, just as hard as the run. Like, I had no social media following comparatively. I probably had a couple of friends and my grandma on, but that's about it. But I had, so I had no social media following, so, which is fine. I'm not, but it meant that getting sponsorship was really hard. So getting funding and sponsorship was pretty much a trust game. People just had to trust that we, we could do this. And, you know, as I said, my partner and I had literally just got together prior to this. So we had no, proof of anything we'd created to get background in the story. No. Yeah. Wow. So hustling to get a company to give us a sixty thousand dollar off road camper trailer to, that we promised we'd give back without any idea how to even use it. Um in one was piece. a really big yes yeah, one piece. <laughs> <laughs> was a challenge and it's so funny in hindsight they said to me when we returned it in february they're like mate we only got approval to give you that trailer because we genuinely didn't think you'd be any longer than two weeks we thought you would not make it <laughs> i love that <laughs> so so i guess the point of that is i was excited to start because the burden and stress of quitting my job, giving up my apartment. There was a lot. And so being out there in a zone that I felt comfortable doing, like I knew how to run. It was everything else that's that yeah, was challenging. Sure. Yeah, it yeah. felt almost like a relief. And a trick that I kept through the entire 150 days was I never thought about what was to come. I only just tried to get through it one day at a time. Because to be honest, if I did think mm-hmm. today I have 3,000 000- 200 k to run that's super overwhelming but if i go i just have to get to the end of today that was manageable so that's how i approached it did you break down each day did you like right run 10k gonna have a snack run another 10k gonna have a bit of lunch or did you just straight through them i broke every day down into smaller chunks too yep i broke it down into sometimes halves sometimes mum didn't like getting up super early so i would go out solo for 20 come back get her have some breakfast and go out with her for the last 20. um you know she was still there for her own holiday too i guess but um yeah so and on them further Love down the path. we need to get your mum on <laughs> yeah. the next podcast to go like tell us the real scope give us the real story behind <laughs> she's like i support what you're doing but not up not before 6 a.m that's what her objective was um yeah i and then i broke it down to park runs park runs just like three more park runs four oh, more park runs <laughs> And I found that a really kind of good way of doing it. And I would treat myself to like a, you know, a snack or a 10 minute walk or something. Yeah. When I hit them as well. So yeah, I used to give myself little rewards as a way to, way to get through it. Cause it's just otherwise a bit, a bit long, slow and boring. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's too much to think about. People often ask us like that when you're doing a mega thing, what do you think about? I'm like, well, I'm only thinking about, the next 2k the next two miles i'm i'm totally in that that and that's enough to handle that's all my brain can handle is the next 20 minutes and nothing else and then i get to that and then it's the next 20 minutes they do a race sorry they do a race in england a lake 100 and each checkpoint has a theme to it and yeah when you're struggling a bit it's always good to visualize the cheese toaster you're going to have or the star wars theme <laughs> checkpoint it's uh yeah it's a really you know when I actually break it down and think about why it's fancy dress it probably is this so so the runners have something extra to look forward to when they get there it's a good something else to think about was there Absolutely. out of the 150 marathons was there a favorite favorite day yeah, yeah. i mean the last day was 
amazing, overwhelming though. My favorite day was it's there's this 40 one kilometer rail trail through my hometown from Warburton to Lillydale. That's pretty flat. Um, and it was where I ran growing up. So it was my daily run. And I got to the start line that morning and there was a huge crowd there. And I actually thought there was a different event on. And then, cause they were half in bikes and there was kids everywhere. I was like, what is going on? And it was my old soccer team or football team from when I was a kid that all grown up had kids and all that day rode their bikes with me, with their kids on the what? back or the front. Exactly. And then there was maybe just an equally large contingency of runners. People had come from so far, camped overnight just to do this run. We finished in Lilydale where I'd gone to high school. So they'd set up like this pretty much just beers and just this um, kind of little party. And yeah, yeah, that was just kind of didn't even feel like it was hard because there was just so many people that I hadn't seen in years running with me. Um, and my three sisters, so that was, that was day 148. So just literally two or three oh, from the finish. Oh, amazing. And then, yeah. and then day 149, my, th- I deliberately kept it to just be my three sisters and my mom on the bike. And they'd all flown in from all over the world. I was one day from this dream run, you know, this, this huge event. And there was, but the funny thing about it was they were just still my sisters, like within six Ks, they were cold and just whinged. And then all of a sudden, so dad had to drop all the jumpers off and then they were too hot because it was a slight, slight climb. Then we had to stop at a cafe for muffins. And then it was like their bums hurt. Then one fell off her bike. I'm like, team, (laughs) where's the focus? (laughs) <laughs> so i literally just had to endure four hours of their whinging um which was hilarious because back, distraction back, back to normality back to normality yeah. <laughs> my sisters would be exactly the same i couldn't get my sisters to do anything like that <laughs> no way i never will again <laughs> no did you ever want to stop and and if you did was there, there's lots of, we often talk about this on podcast uh, about internal and external motivation. Did you have anything that you would, I don't know, uh, fall back on maybe to help you dig deep? Yeah, there was a time where I really did have to lean on that. And yeah, there was, uh, there's a runner you've probably heard, Ned Brockman. He was an Australian who ran across a, um, a young Australian tradie who ran the other way across Australia. Uh, he started 10 to 20 days after I started and the whole of Australia flocked to his run. Like he had an incredible mar- like marketing campaign or really he had a much, to be honest, a much bigger budget. You know, there's a lot of gender inequality in, in, in sport. It, the, irrespective, everybody knew about Ned Ruff. And I just remember feeling like I'd ran, he'd raised more money in 10 minutes than I'd raised in a thousand Ks so far. And and I'm not a jealous person. It wasn't really, I was stoked that he was running and I was like, it was another person doing something awesome. But I remember running one day and looking at my GoFundMe and like, yeah. And I, on Spotify, all I could hear was these news updates of Ned and how far Ned had gone, how much money he'd raised. And it was like, and and I looked at my GoFundMe and there was $4,000 there. I was like, mate, I've this, like I'm a thousand Ks in and I'm behind. I was like, and it felt almost like what was the point. So I had this, like dual failure like my brain was going in overdrive because firstly I was thinking man like what if I don't physically make it and secondly what if I do make it but there's no impact and I just remember feeling almost for the first time I got the shakes and the wobbles about the whole run and it was I really then had to focus on my why a lot because I just remember thinking it doesn't matter like you're, you're still out here meeting people daily you're still out here doing this incredible grassroots kind of if you're sharing the stories of people doing incredible volunteer activities you're you know you're still going to raise money it might not be 2.6 million but it will still be a huge amount um and i just remember then having to really kind of regroup and just remember yeah, intrinsically yeah yeah that it was always a dream of yours irrespective of what goes on outside externally you still want to get to Melbourne. whatever he's doing 
He's not important. <laughs> but it's such an important message because it's your your thing was huge. It was on a national, international scale. But loads of people will have felt that themselves when they're doing the, their own big challenges and races or just day-to-day -day life and they see someone else who gets more attention and, and they're like, yeah, yeah, but, but, but I, I'm really trying too. But then that's when you have to pull it back to your whys and your reason. Well, Ned's not been on the Teen Trills podcast. So I'll Ned, answer. No, not welcome. Not welcome, Gary. Unless <laughs> I, I'll look for a, I'm just going to look for a quick picture of him in case. Oh, you'll know straight away. But that's the thing. It's like a funny vulnerability, isn't it? Because you almost feel a bit like, selfish or a bit like oh you're just being jealous but and i didn't talk about it for a long time it's only since i've had time to reflect that i'm now opening up about how i truly felt because everybody was also asking me about it i went on live tv halfway through the run and they put all the footage of ned up being like oh you know did you were you talking to ned are you supporting each other i'm like I really want to talk about my cause so i remember yeah. just having to constantly draw her back and that was like and to be honest, I own, I'm a positive person and I love the, and at the end of the day, it would have shined a really big light on running and cross country running and endurance running. Um, but yeah, if you ask me, was there a hard moment and it's for a strange reason, but that would yeah. be, would have been my hardest. You go back on family as well. Sometimes I think about, I've done all this training, I've missed people, I've, they've sacrificed a lot. I have to finish this goddamn race. Otherwise <laughs> yeah. all, oh, all, all their that. sacrifice has been for nothing. <laughs> Can't go back with that trailer two weeks in. I bet they booked that trailer out as well. And they were like, she's still going, you know, we're going to have to uh, source another. <laughs> they bit. sold it. Then pre-sold it. The poor guy had to wait for like six extra months. He would have been ropeable and it was covered in red dust. Anyway, separate story. Um, <laughs> but they must have known. Um, but no, I did. I mean, as I said, my parents took long service leave. They spent heaps of money on their own trailer. You know, they, they lots of people had friends fly out friends donate like you do you ask and my poor partner who spent seven months of his life um supporting full-time and who is now currently live editing in the cafe next door still the film so you know his job's still going so yeah it's it, it is a lot to ask. <laughs> seven <Yeah>. months Mike. <laughs> I love him. Even when you yeah. say like 150 marathons, I still haven't computed seven. actually. Yeah, that's yeah. seven months. Yeah, when yeah, it's hard, isn't it? What about your kids? I've seen loads of pictures of you in oh, please tell me you've had more than one uh vest and, <laughs> and shorts. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. It was, a, it was a, um, indigenous Australian artist work. And it's so funny. It's my filmmaker partner's idea. So I just, I really wanted a uniform. I thought it would give like a design to the trip and it also provides continuity from a film point of view, but I designed it to be super earthy and greens and blues and browns, just like because, and he looked at my design and he goes, I'm never going to see you against the backdrop. You're running through the bush. You're dressed like the bush what where's the pop in that so yeah we came up with this well we actually asked a few artists to help us design it and he's like yellow pink blue green like bright you know like orange um so that's that's the design um and yeah it was made so quickly it was not a running material whatsoever oh, no. <laughs> if you saw it you'd be like why did you do that a few chapping issues in the bush yeah and just really heavy really oh, like it really looks quite light no, oh, okay. <laughs> it's good though. I loved, I loved it. Like talking about ch chaffing, did you see in our Facebook group? I've gone off on a bit of a tangent here. We someone had shared one of our recent guests. They'd uh, developed a product for for, for 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 the feet basically, but then somebody shared in our Facebook group the other day that uh, lubrication used for sex with silicon based <laughs> is a really good anti chafing product <laughs> sorry Dan. I'm, I'm never uh, taking that in my bag on airports no. <laughs> anything in my kit bag at checkpoints someone finds that they're gonna report yeah. you <laughs> Uh, it's for a run i swear it's for a run yes, I honest. Swear. yeah it's for yeah. a run it's for a run yeah 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 how's life changed since uh the record attempt can you walk down the street? Uh, offered opportunities? <laughs> yeah, signatures are left, right and centre. Uh, no, no. Um, it's <laughs> No, life's relatively normal. Um, yeah, lots of opportunities have come off the back of it, which is good. And I've been lucky enough to not have to go back to my old role. Um, I'm going to 
hopefully off the back of this work for myself back in nutrition, go back to my roots. And I think I'm a lot more focused to go into, um, the whole environmental activism space than I have been before. Um, the one thing I did learn from this is there's a lot to be done. Um, and yeah, that's what I would like to like to focus on ongoing. It's nonstop, is it? There's always something to be done. My goodness me. And I suppose, yeah, if you walk past any trailer companies, they'll be locking the door and uh, putting the shutters down. <laughs> no, not her again. Great attention. In my defense, their name was everywhere and we did so much better than they expected us to do. So I'm not that upset. <laughs> Sure. If you want, you know, you can give a shout out. I know we're UK based, but you never know where this podcast lands. If you want to give a shout out to some of your sponsors. That's true. Track about. Thank you for, for, for donating a very great camper trailer for a much longer intended period of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All my sponsors are beautiful. They're all mostly Australian, um, all sustainable. So um, yeah, it's all on my website, tip to toe 2022, which is a really good way to see, uh yeah kind of who got behind it and who trusted me early on <laughs> so i'm very also, I'm, i love my sponsors perhaps as well i like i like some of the writing you've done as well like how you you really struggled to find sponsorship and like you had a lot of no's but you kept you kept going you kept sticking to your principles so perhaps if people are thinking about doing like a big challenge a big adventure <clears throat> they pop over to your web page as well to kind of look at how you did that and what sort of you learned as well as stuff that's really important have you yeah. how much have you raised um sort of have you got a total can people still donate yeah i think it's at 132 or 3000 the good thing is that it, there's 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 a lot of fundraisers coming off the back of this now. So my shoe sponsor, Takai, are releasing a trailer shoe. So they're a relatively new company, eco-friendly or recycled and profits or proceeds from that shoe are going towards the cause. And there's things popping up on the side of it that are off the back of it. I've also had people do their own runs to raise money for the, for the cause too. So awesome. yeah, it's still open. Um, it'll stay open for probably another month. I'm still waiting for a couple more things to finish. Um, and then I eventually will have to close it off, but no, they've got, um, yeah, it's going direct to the, um, charity, the wilderness society, and it's doing great things. Essentially the money is connecting people to protect nature at a federal level to assure that the national parks are protected, um, for years to come. Did you ever think when you took that first step that this was going to be a life change, such a life changing experience and that it, it sounds like it's sort of like going to shape your whole future now. You've met your future partner for the moment, you know, where that goes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this sounds like like when you started, perhaps you didn't have an idea that like, actually, this is going to be your future. You were just like doing this big wanting to raise awareness. But it sounds like this is actually totally life changing for you. It was life changing and not so much for the opportunities presented, but the lessons that I've learned from myself. Like I, I feel a lot more fearless now. I feel a lot more confident in myself and it could be an age thing too. I think, you know, I've hit 30 around the same time. I think you, you grow into yourself a little bit, but I've learned to not worry so much about what everyone thinks. And I've learned to just try and that hustling is sometimes worth yeah. it that you know you will get a lot of no's but hustling will you'll eventually get there um and momentum builds momentum and opportunity builds more opportunity so if you just start something you just you just don't know so it's worth worth giving it a crack do you ever wish now having to do all these podcasts and chat to people like us all the time do you ever wish i wish i was back on that dirt road with mum on the bike life is simple <laughs> I like, I like, I like talking to people. So, I mean, I was hustling to get podcasts in the early weeks and no one wanted to talk to me. So I'm very yeah. grateful now oh, that I do. I so would have talked to you, but I, whenever people are doing this stuff, I never want to jump into their DMs or be like, do, do you want to talk to me? Cause I'm like, you must like, just want to be focused. Maybe I should have. Oh no, no, that's okay. No, it's fine. So I'm very grateful, but yes, um, I will do another like, something like this. I don't know if I'll be running based. I, I'm tempted. There's a small part of me that wants to challenge myself in something that I'm really uncomfortable doing, like kayaking or, you know, I'm good at running. So I did a running based yeah, challenge, yeah, but what happens if I was- challenge harder. Yeah. In some 
Kayaking. Oh no. Can you imagine like the hands? It's like, but you could freewheel a bit with kayaking. Cause I often wonder that like, if you do a long cycling, you can like stop pedaling for a bit. Whereas running, yeah. you never can, you can't just stop because you stop. Even down like hill, you're still. Yeah. I like the idea of doing something on a bike. You can go a lot further on a bike too. Um, I just got to get my bum used to sitting in the saddle oh. for oh, yeah. endless hours. Oh, yes. Back might, to the, back to the lubricant, get hey? It. Yeah, get that lubricant, you know, face up your fears <laughs> and get the chemist to that one. <laughs> well, excellent. But at the moment, I think sit back, enjoy. Oh, you've done an amazing thing and you're still doing an amazing thing. Um, and we are so uh, grateful for you coming on the podcast and sharing your story uh, you're definitely up there with one of my, well, one of my top faves on the podcast for the story, women doing amazing things and uh, not being afraid to get out there and shout their story as well. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having me. We do end every show though with, we've got, we kick in quick now, five. But we've got... Some of those questions were tricky. <laughs> uh, this now gets, this now gets deep. There could be emotion. It could be tears. You might need to ring your mum yeah. afterwards, but just go with it. Okay, quick question number one, right? You're going to break another world record. Is it going to be the most Rubik, Rubik's Cube solved on a skateboard or the most blindfolded backward standing somersaults in one minute? Oh, wow. Rubik's Cube on a skateboard. I mean, it needs to be yeah. a really long skateboard for enough time to, to yeah. solve the Rubik's Cube, though. Really long downhill. <laughs> My kids love Rubik's cubes. They all they sit and they're like they have like three or four different Rubik's cubes, and they're mate. They like we never could solve them when we were younger. No, I've they, never like solved the, one. The algorithms, and they're like two turns this way, one turn that way, one turn that way. I can't even like I can't even see what you're doing. No, too smart these days. Kids too smart. Too smart. Your go-to lazy dinner burgers. Burgers. This could be controversial. Or just one, one burger is fine. <laughs> English fish and chips or Australian fish and chips? In, uh, Australian, sorry. <laughs> oh, she's reeled us in, hasn't she? With a bit of like, I went to Reading Uni, I know London. <laughs> <laughs> There's some bad Australian fish and chips, but if you're on the coast and it's like, and it's a good fish and chips, yeah, it's hard to beat. What's I still love the barramundi. Is that right? Am I remembering that right? Barramundi and chips? Yeah. Oh, my goodness, yeah. man. That was sensational. There was a day up in the Cape where my dad caught this huge barramundi by hand because they'd become <gasps> landlocked. And, and it's just, and I just remember it because he hasn't stopped talking about it for literally five months now. <laughs> Stuff your record. Do you remember that time I got the bacon? <laughs> literally. <laughs> He went back to work, showed the everyone at work photos of me running, but, but after the Barramundi, like. <laughs> I, I love, oh my God, dad's on the podcast too. Mom and dad. That's fantastic. Okay, okay. What movie do you enjoy quoting the most? Oh, great question. I wouldn't know about movie, but I do quote The Simpsons a lot. Um, I think it's just my generation. That's all I watched growing up. So and there's a lot of singing Simpsons songs in in my in my running time, so I'll lock that in. What about you, Eddie? You put this question in. Have you thought of one? Yeah, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I love it. Bryn and I, ah. my husband and I, we crack each other up by quoting "Why a spoon, cousin? Because it hurts more, idiot." I mean, every time he says it, we're unpacking the dishwasher. And we get the spoon out every time. I know, it's so sad. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> One of my fond memories of Australia was these enormous fiberglass sculptures in lots of these small towns. Do you have a particular favourite fiberglass sculpture? Ned Kelly was fun. Um, there's actually one all over. I've seen all of orange. I've seen a mango. I've seen watermelon. I've seen yeah, I've seen yeah. heaps. Massive I think crocodiles. I took photos of a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Ned I'm Kelly, so but just because it. But no, it was the first one that popped into my mind. And every week we share this show on Instagram um, and we pop some music to that Instagram story. You have the choice. Yeah. What song would you like us to use? Oh, interesting. As long as it's on Instagram. They, and we've <laughs> never not had it. Everyone, we've, we've yeah, that's true. Found it. And if I don't, I just put... And Eddie, write it down. You send me a message on a Friday. What was the song again? <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I've got, look, I'm ready. I've got my post it note. I'm ready. Okay, good. I don't know what song would, I, it would have to be like some sort of running based song. 
some sort of journey. Where- I'm going yeah, on, a, yeah. on a dirt road with my mom on a bike. I don't think that's that awesome. one. <laughs> that's- <laughs> yeah, this is actually where, you know, like, this is where I have to, I have to, I don't know, I might have to message you that one and we'll keep it a surprise and put it live because I cannot think of one right now. Is it's there the a song? Time that's happened. It's, yeah, yeah. Do you, is there a song you, it's a big thing. People get invested in this question. Well, I feel is like it's a, almost like an identity thing. And what if happens if I choose the wrong song that doesn't fully properly represent judge. the moment? People will judge you if you judge choose the wrong song. Um, we're a judgy crowd. <laughs> um, <laughs> is there a song you like listen to? Do you listen to music when you're running? Is that a thing? I did. I did, but I... I didn't like when I was offline, all of the, so I only had the Ed Sheeran album. Ed Sheeran, my kids love Ed Sheeran and he pops up on my Spotify and I'm like, that's way, that's too bit low for running sometimes. It's bit low. That's it. That's it. I didn't think that through. I just like randomly downloaded some playlists and now, and I love Ed Sheeran, it comes on and I almost get this weird PTSD and have to Forget. turn it off because <laughs> yeah. it takes yeah. me back. To listening to it over and over. Okay. You so think yeah, about it, I'll pop into your DMs in the next couple of days, and if you don't choose, I will choose something. Oh terrible. my goodness, mate! Please, <laughs> please. Okay. Disney <laughs> I'm classic one hundred and one. <laughs> the Little Mermaid. All right, no, I'm going to give this a lot of serious thought, and I will revert back. I love it. Excellent. I love it. Thank you so oh. much. What an absolute cheek. We we rate we rate our podcast with how much our cheeks hurt at the end of yeah. it. And that's why <laughs> I feel rosy. I'm sore. I'm sore. <laughs> I'm going to need some uh, manipulation. Thank you so much. I loved following your journey. I feel so blessed that you have, I've now, we're now best friends as well. Um, good luck with the next few months. Make sure you take some time, take some time to yourself to reflect as well and enjoy your little, uh, all that lovely sunshine. Make sure you come to London too and uh, get a bit of cold and wet. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye. What a joy Akana was, wasn't she? We had such a lovely chat with her. Sorry, Damo, she is now my new BFF. She was a radiator. Loved it. She, she was a radiator. Uh, we'll put all the links in the show notes so you can find out a little bit more. Her blog is really, really good. Her Instagram is really good. Um, yeah, and uh, you can still donate some money if that's how you'd like to spend some of your pennies. Thank you so much, Akana, for coming on the podcast. Tales from the Trails again, and look who is top of the chart. Two weeks running. No, I'm not starting to not believe this. <laughs> I wonder what if he strapped his watch on his dog or something. <laughs> I I'm don't know. Go. You keep talking. I'm Googling Gwen Van But Tong. yeah, unless Eddie finds something to the contrary. Gwen Van Tong, 280 miles again. Uh, and Gwen Van Tong again, 55 hours and 37 minutes of tall exercise. But yeah, James Noble winning this uh, Silver Northern Traverse, and he also tops the charts for the elevation. 29,478 feet. Well done, everybody. That is super impressive. When get in touch. I want an, I want deets. I want some evidence and I want details. And the why. You know, I don't know what, what he's yeah. doing it for. <laughs> but why? Why are you? So that's basically like over 500 miles. He could be doing some um, marathon world record for all we know. I haven't got a clue, but um, it'd be awesome to find out what's behind those numbers. Kirsty Law, Tales from the Trails. This is brilliant. Can I read this? And I know exactly where she's talking about. I love this. Can I say I have run this part in the middle of the night in a massive snow slash rainstorm. And I know I stopped at the uh, hut where it, it's meant to have been... Um, uh, where Wuthering Heights, the inspiration for Wuthering Heights was set. And I remember thinking, I remember reading the placard, I remember thinking, I can see why this is one of the most desolate and soulless places I've ever been in my life. <laughs> Poor Cappy. Anyway, uh, Kirsty Face a much nicer picture of it. One beautiful sunny day, I went out running up to Top Withens, 
Bronte's Wuthering Heights. It was really hot for the Pennines, so I had my short fell running shorts on with that annoying netting that they have inside. Oh, yuck. I was running along the moors in the heather, really enjoying the wonderful views and weather when I must have startled a baby grouse. It flew up my leg into my fell running short shorts and got its leg tangled in the netting inside my shorts. <laughs> <laughs> then she's written, OMG, I thought I'd have a heart attack. The shock of it happening, and the fact it was, oh my God, it's making me cross my legs. And the fact <laughs> that it was still lodged in my pants set me off screaming and swearing and re- le- leaping around like a mad woman. But it was still lodged in my netting, flapping about and shrieking, just like me. It must have looked hilarious. Luckily, I was in the middle of nowhere. What seemed like an age of panic, I eventually got to grips with shakily untangling the equally terrified baby grouse and managing to set it free. It landed on the moor, shocked and stunned, like me. It just sat there, stunned, staring at me. I think the poor young grass had been traumatised for life. I know I have. I now run along the moor singing and clapping to let them know I'm there, like a running version of a grouse beater. (laughs) Oh my gosh, I've never heard of such a thing. And I also never want to hear of it or ever let that happen to me. Can you imagine it's walking around in your undercarriage? Oh, no. no. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny, isn't it, when like... You come into contact with wildlife and it really, really freaks you out, like a bird or even a spider or something like that. It's like, like no, a no, baby no. bird, but it's in a, quite an intimate place. Yes. Love it. Thanks for sharing that story, Kirsty. Yeah, thanks, Kirsty. We have got one more Tales from the Trails, but we're going to leave it until next week, just in case we don't it's have anything to one. read up. <laughs> it's a good one. It's poo related, so that means it's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you have got any Tales from the Trails, email them in to uh, hell or at and trails.com and if they meet it through the censorship committee eddie and i then um we'll read them out on the show which, which will pass anything through yeah so, <laughs> through. competition i wish i could end there it's always um it's always, maybe I can, get, can i get lisa to end it could you get bryn to end it that's I was thinking of entering Bryn. He really needs some um, new trainers. And I sort of say to him, you, you should get some. And he's like, he's got holes in the soles of his trainers. But he wouldn't. He's like, oh, that stone really hurt. <laughs> uh, and then he's like, a stone got wedged in the hole now, so it's fine. I can't feel the ground. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, he needs some new trainers. <laughs> when he sees your arsenal of spine shoes and then he's like running around with a shoe with a hole in them. <laughs> But yeah, if you would like to win a pair of Scarpa Rebel Run, then you need to be a member of the T and Trails Facebook group. Pop a an answer, a picture, a lovely little anecdote as to why you'd need to be in with a chance of wearing a pair of shoes. And the last thing you need to do is share the post with your community and friends. And thanks to everybody who's entered already. Some great pictures and stories over there. Very dog themed, uh, which is awesome. And we'll pick a winner. Not at random. Eddie and I are going to have a little chat through this. If on you the... haven't shared the post, though, however cute and fluffy and amazing your little puppy is. We're big on the rules, aren't we, Gary? You know, stick to yeah. the rules. <laughs> stick to the rules. Gary is. He's a stick. Honestly, if it wasn't for Gary, this podcast would go right <laughs> off the lines. Gary keeps everything on the straight and narrow. It's like, Eddie, you do that. Eddie, you've got to do this. Eddie's going to have to edit you out. Don't lose out on the chance to win by not sharing it or doing something that you need to do to be in with a chance of winning but yeah best of luck everybody and i'm really enjoying this competition so far do you want to enjoy something even more gary go, on, go down the shop get yourself some of that lube that ali bailey's been recommending on her instagram <laughs> i might already have some Woo-hoo, two, Ooh. Two. <laughs> gary. <laughs> i couldn't i just couldn't i just couldn't uh, but anyway, uh, if you there was some, to... sorry, but I remember uh, at Hardmore's one year, somebody had some. God, I hope I'm remembering this right. Somebody had put their nutrition in condoms. I think that's correct. I think Your I remember head. this. Yeah. No, somebody no. listening to the show will be familiar with Hardmore's and will remember this story. But I'm certain one of the runners in their drop bag or wherever it was had, I think, what looked like rice pudding in condoms. No. Correct me if I'm no, wrong. That could be I a tales from the trails. I can't. No. The taste. The taste. Put it out what? there. We'll see. <laughs>
You want a review? You want to feel good about yourself? I love a review. I've got one right for you. I'm going to embarrass this guy. If it, if it's who I think it is, Woody seventy one UK. He did a two fifty eight. That's a two fifty eight, listeners at Paris Marathon. Set out to run a sub three. Executed the training plan absolutely perfectly and executed. I won't say who's coaches, but let's just say uh, it's a pretty good plan. Okay, here we go. Here's his review. The warm, fuzzy feeling in your ears. Do you love that warm, fuzzy feeling when you get from a long run, get cleaned up, put on your best slouching wear, and just snuggle into the sofa with your fa- favorite post-run recovery snack and a nice big steaming mug of tea? You do? Do you wish that you could have that feeling on the trail, smashing out your long run, knowing what you have to look forward to when you get home? Your wish? Then look no further. Eddie and Gary will have you hanging on their every word with their sublime mix of chemistry, chat, advice and real life stories of trail runners daring to do. From kit to coaching to running, some of the most challenging races our sport has to offer. They leave no stone unturned and bring you the good, the bad, the ugly, the inappropriate, all in audible form for your weekly delight. Their first hand experience and guest list of real life runners from all parts of the community will have you waiting in anticipation all week for your next installment so download the podcast get it hooked up in your ears relax or run along to the best running podcast out there you won't be disappointed keep it up you two you make the long runs easy oh, oh. I feel like that should go like on my Thanks, front door yeah, print that that on in the kids bedroom saying let's read this somebody appreciates your mother <laughs> That is lovely. Thanks for that. And well done. 258. Smoking fast. Smoking fast. He's the guy that we did brew with the coaches who said about being a quaddy runner. Do you remember? Yeah, Someone yeah. said, yeah, she goes to show. And they put those quads to good uh, to good use. It's a wonderful marathon too, Mar- uh, Paris. It's a good place to go for a run. Very, very good. I remember Paris Marathon and they had compostable toilets which i thought was pretty good instead of those kind of chemical loos that we get in the uk there's some little sawdust stuff you put like a shovel of sawdust i don't want to think you... where that stress is going but we'll just roll with that straight into the river well this one is short and sweet and i'm not even sure what that um username is over on apple podcast how do i pronounce that eddie T- type it's just random I just think just, just, go, just go with it. Yeah, literally, it's just random letters. Oh. Anyway, fantastic. Very much enjoying listening to Eddie and Gary on this podcast. Funny and informative. They are great companions for the long run. Short and sweet, but straight to the point. I love that. Thanks so much, everybody. There is a few. We've got a few more five-star reviews over on Apple Podcasts, so we'll update this section. And if you don't week. like us and you want to leave a one-star review, we can read those ones out if you think we're getting a oh, bit bit no, 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 What are you doing? <laughs> Gary's actually started frothing when I mentioned it. No, I don't know. Be careful what you say. <laughs> That's a joke. We'll get rid of that. It's a joke. We're coming to the end of the show. First, we'll cast an eye on what we hope our week ahead will look like. What have you got planned, Eddie? When I think of weeks ahead, do anyone else, parents, feel like this? Like when you get Sunday night, try and get like really organised. Everything's organised. And then by Monday morning, it's freaking chaos again. Sometimes when I think about the week ahead, I'm just like, it's too much. It's too much for one woman to cope with everything. But you know what, Gary? I will, because I'm a trooper and I'm a soldier. You never mourn. Anyway, busy busy week last week our french schools are still we're not on holiday yet but the brits are all having a lovely holiday out here in their posh cars driving around blocking me out of car parking spaces you go on holiday to somewhere which is a town where people live a little bit of courtesy a little bit of courtesy that everyone is trying to still live their lives and as lovely as it is that you're on holiday perhaps not everybody is on holiday anyway the kids are really really tired oh my god dragging them out of bed every morning i haven't broached the subject that they've got two weeks holiday but next week <clears throat> they're still skiing every day Every day, four hours. Ooh. They know it, but they're like, okay. oh, holiday. And I'm like, yeah, still going to get up at seven o'clock every morning. Um, and the coach did send a message saying, we're going to do some weekends after that skiing. And I was like, I'm done. No, no, that's it. We're done. Skis are going away. I want to pack this glove box away. I want to get my shorts out. I want to start shaving my legs. I want summer to come now. I'm done. 
So yeah, I'm going to get my long runs in and because it's going to be tricky then the next two weeks, I will have a recovery week. One of those weeks, I always like to do that in a holiday is plan a little bit of a down week because uh, the kids are kind of old enough now I can go out for a morning run while they're either still asleep or just surfacing, but they don't really, I mean, if I go for longer than an hour, I start getting messages about breakfast and what time I'll be back and stuff. So I will fix it. And so I'm going to make sure this week is a good week and enjoy. I went for a lo- a lovely ski yesterday. I love pleasure skiing, especially if I get to do it with my pleasure skiing with my husband, because there's nothing I enjoy more than skiing past every single person in the resort at full speed behind him. He's such a good <laughs> skier. He picks all the right lines. And I'm just I like, see, yeah. I absolutely believe that I'm Shemi Alcott behind him. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he says I look like a T-Rex dinosaur. Anyway, hopefully a couple of days of that. I feel like I'm just getting into the winter now and I've got my running legs and my ski legs. I'm ready to go and then it'll all shut. But hey-ho, that's life. Good. Hold it together another week and then some holidays. And we're actually going to have a week holiday, aren't we? I think that's quite good, Gary. Um, one of those weeks will be a podcast holiday as well because Gary needs a break. What about you? You've got a lot more exciting stuff, haven't you? I know it. Now you're going to trump my ace. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I've mentioned probably about three or four weeks a trip to the lakes. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say I've mentioned three or four times I'm going to the lake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mentioned, yeah, about going to the lakes and it never happened for various reasons. It never actually happened. But this weekend, hopefully Saturday, we are off to the lakes. I'm treating it as like a, a nutrition practice and adventure because it's going to be a bog going around leg one and two if it all goes to plan. It's going to be about eight hours out on feet, which from a training point of view, I'm not really too sure if that's a good thing to do. I'd probably prefer to break that up over two days. Uh, a dragon's back good day though. I mean, it's, yeah, quite, not... it's quite early on for dragon's back training. Eight hours oh, is a big... Oh yeah, but... I just don't know if it's too much. That's that's my sure only worry. From too a... much, but isn't that like the basis of your training plan, Gary? That's always just a little bit. <laughs> there is <much>. no basis. <clears throat> there is no basis to the training plan, but it, it is what it is. For a long time. It's not like you're doing that. If you were doing that every weekend, I'd be like, yeah. it's going to bite into two or three days. You're going to be tired after that. But well, I'd be interested. Yeah, if I can move on the Sunday, then it would be just a few miles to see what I can do. Because again, for the dragons back race. Out to get the M&Ms on Sunday. People are asking me what I want for my Easter treats. Um, So yeah, that's the plan. Leg one and leg two, then we'll get the bus back to uh, Keswick. So that would be good. I know, good old stinking, stinking middle-aged trail runners. Uh, <laughs> but what is good with leg one from a nav, from an admin point of view, you can put like a little drop bag at Threlkeld so you don't have to carry eight hours of nutrition. So you've got like a little uh, checkpoint at Threlkeld. So yeah, if anybody sees a bag... With loads Take of it. goodies in it. Take it. <laughs> Stop it. Three bags in there. <laughs> but what is going to be good? It's going to be because you know when people have say gut issues and stuff like that, you don't really get a chance to properly test it when you're doing your local runs on your local trails. So we're going to have eight hours out with like I'm super fortunate with the podcast. We we'll get sent quite a lot of product for various brands. So yeah, it's going to be Active Root drinks and their chews, and we've got gels and bars and chews from Protein Rebel and Vela Forte. So I will 100% find out what works and if I can stomach it over an eight-hour period. So, yeah, lots of good prep and admin because we mention it so often, practice, 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 what you're going to use on race day. And hopefully this is the kind of stuff I will be using on race day. So, yeah, that is the plan for that. Quality sessions. Um, oh, God, here we go. And he won't do any of them. or say, I've just done one of them. He's all talk. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you going to do? Well, we'll see today because a day, which is Tuesday, should be this four times. It, it, on the plan, I think it says three times 10 minutes, but I 100% have not got a 10 minute hill where I live. I could maybe get a seven and a half, eight minute hill. So four times eight. And then the other quality session on Thursday is my 10 minutes. And then I think it's six times 1K, then another 10 minutes. So there are the sessions. There is another one too, but 100% because of this enormous day. On Saturday, I will not be doing anything other than those two, if I even do those two. I've got, I can't dodge them, but I can, no, I, but then... I did, I did four by eight minute hills this morning. It's tasty. Eight minutes is a long time. Yeah, four minutes, yeah. you get to four minutes and you're like, no, 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 it can't be. I can't only be halfway. You get to six minutes and you're like is this a joke? Two more minutes. And then the longest two minutes of your life will happen. Enjoy. I do want a bit of company, but because I need to do it 
because if I get in the evening, then it's dinner time and this and that, other life takes over. So I really need to pull my finger out and go and do it after my lunch. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, that's what the plan is. We'll see next week what the reality was. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. And thanks to our partners and Patreons. Go over to Patreon and check out all of the discount codes. You know, I do mention this all the time, but if you are Patreon, use the perks, use the uh, discount codes, 100% put it to action. Uh, and one last favor to ask, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and a share would be ace. And also, last but not least, a massive Thank you to our show sponsor, Silver. That's it. That's a wrap. You know that now. You're a movie star, Gary. Is that what Daniel said? That's a wrap, guys. Action. Action. (laughs) Stay safe out there. Stay safe on the trails. Take your baby bag. Run wise, run well. Don't overdo it. Stop at eight minutes. Don't do 10 minutes. Listen to your body. Make sure you refuel with just tea and lots of it. I've got a bit of a headache now because all I've drunk is tea this morning. Eddie, Eddie. I think I got a, a a rogue cup of proper coffee yesterday. I asked for decaf and I'm sure it was proper coffee. It's about your coffee. Yeah, god damn it. Oh, okay. of, That's about... This is total we're totally I know this is a conclusion, but hang with me, guys. Netflix, the night manager. Have you started watching it? No, I haven't. Is it the night agent? Oh my god, I can't remember. Anyway. It's really good. We can only okay. watch one episode a night because it is on my limit of scary stuff. But it's good if you're looking for a new new Netflix little uh, little binge watch. Uh, head over okay. there. Anyway, my name is Eddie Sutton, <laughs> and I'm Gary Thwaites. And that was episode seventeen, possibly our last. Look at Gary's face. Oh, <laughs> <Ian> Trails. <laughs>